hosted in conjunction with Chris Media. The CEO interview series allows investors to hear directly from the CEOs leading the companies featured on Wholesale Investor. Enjoy the interview and reach out via the details in the description. Hi, and welcome to another Crisp TV interview. Today, I'm joined by Paul Muller, CEO and Managing Director of Databench. Thank you for joining me, Paul. Thank you, Rhythm. Thanks for having me. Amazing. Now, Paul, just to start things off, and this is for our audience members watching this, do you mind giving us an executive summary of the venture that you're working on? So just so that the audience has a high level understanding. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Databench is an Australian founded uh, technology company. We were founded in 2018 and our whole um, vision and mission is really around bringing data privacy discovery and compliance automation to the Australia and New Zealand marketplace. And we've seen this as a challenge for businesses because they've fundamentally been trying to meet with compliance obligations manually and quite frankly the big challenge is, is they don't know where all the privacy data exists. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, let us dive deeper into the uh, technology there because, you know, there is a little bit to unpackage there. So what exactly did you saw uh, as a problem in the market and what's spurred the motivation behind this venture? Yes, well, over the couple of years since our first foundation, we did research and development into the market to understand how companies are meeting with data privacy compliance. There are regulations out there and businesses need to comply to attributes of regulation. But what we also discovered is uh, a lot of lack of understanding of what it means to be compliant and at the same time understand that should an issue occur, such as a data breach, the obligations on a business in reporting, but also to how to recognize the issue, the depth of the issue, to be able to report and communicate effectively with customers, consumers, staff, contractors, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we look at the problem in four, four steps. The first step is, is that there is a lot of data out there and companies are growing exponentially with their data, both what they keep in house and what they store out on cloud repositories. The world of data continues to grow. Now, we're not trying to be data specialists across the whole field of data. We focus on the PI data, the personal information or the privacy data. Those elements of data that fundamentally um, help to understand or, or, or map an individual. And they can be anything from uh, fundamental criteria about name, age and address and passport, tax file numbers, credit cards, right through to sensitive information, which could be things like health records or it could be transaction history. And so we recognize that companies are grappling with where this data is, what the form of it is, where it's stored, uh, and how to get access to it, uh, and really understand the full paradigm of, of uh, PI data that's being held by the organization. The second aspect is around regulations. Australia has been fairly laxed with its regulations around data privacy. But some recent events, particularly in the last couple of months here in Australia, with organisations like Optus and Medibank, these are now putting uh, regulations under the, the microscope. And we, you know, we feel that at the end of this year and early next year, we will start to see some regulatory changes which will impact businesses in how they must remain compliant in both their reporting of things like data breaches, but also to how they keep personal data, personal information secure. The third aspect is that the hackers are out there very busy every day because what do they want? They want the personal information. They know that if they get hold of PI data, it has a saleable attribute on the dark web and other environments. So they want to get to the crown jewels for, for within an organization. And the fourth component we focus on is the consumer themselves, the customer or the supplier or even the employee. How do they interact with an organization when they have rights that may provide them with show me my data or, or I want to change my data or I want to delete my data. And organisations grapple with how to take consumer requests and satisfy these completely, securely and on time according to the requirements that are set by the, the regulators. So with those four elements in mind, this is what Databench has sought out to, to, to solve through 
privacy discovery and compliance automation. Brilliant. Thank you for that uh, detailed explanation, uh, Paul. Now, for my next question, I would love to talk about the market feedback. So since uh, the venture was founded, how has the feedback been uh, from the market about the product? Yes, we've been on a wonderful journey. Um, if we go back a couple of years since we first founded, the concept of data privacy was of interest. In many boardrooms, mm -hmm. they considered that there were compliance uh, requirements and obligations but it, I'd have to say that it generally has not been a topic that's been taken overtly seriously by boards. However, I see the landscape changing, and particularly for us in the last six months, and with recent events in the last one to two months, we've seen an exponential change in market focus. And we're now at a position where we're getting boards and C-level executives and chief risk officers and data privacy officers who are now standing up and saying, hey, we better take this more seriously, both because of the regulatory requirements, but also too, we don't want to be the next uh, breached environment. We don't want to be hit with ransomware. We don't want to have a barrage of consumers coming at us requesting their information. So how can privacy discovery and compliance automation help us to, to meet our goals, but accelerate both time to market and reduce the costs of any manual processes which some organisations are currently trying to tackle this purely by manual uh, you know, human resource um, allocation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for my next question, Paul, I would love to do a comparison. So uh, there would be other solutions possibly because, you know, uh, many companies have, have been looking into this problem now since exactly like what you had mentioned that, you know, what we saw with Optus. So, uh, what makes your solution, uh, you know, like competitive? Uh, what is that unique element that you're offering? Yes. But then what's really interesting about what DataBench brings to the Australian New Zealand market is we truly are unique in our offering. There are parts of our mm -hmm. offering that technology companies can provide assistance to, to corporates today around mapping of their data or manually process mm -hmm. or providing processes around assessments. Well, we have these features and, and, and capabilities within our solution suite as well. But we are not aware of any technology player who, who solves the end-to-end -end paradigm of the four components that I spoke about before, the mapping of the privacy data, meeting with regulatory compliance, uh, understanding a, 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 a cyber um, in, uh, cyber risk profile around um, protecting the privacy data and knowing where it stands and then being able to automate the consumer uh, process of interacting with the organisation. Now, our technology has actually come from uh, very good grounds. We've compiled components of successful technologies which are operational and proven in markets of Europe, complying with GDPR, and across North America, particularly complying with the, the state laws like California and some of the other states. What DataBench has done is we have taken some of these successful technologies, we've modified these, adapted them to Australia and New Zealand compliance requirements, and through a series of six patents that we currently have with the International um, uh, Patent Treaty Office under review, we will change the landscape of privacy discovery and automation with our next iteration of technologies. So we're very much at the forefront of what we bring to Australia and New Zealand, leveraging strengths of solutions that are currently underway overseas, but also with a very clear future of where we want to take this as, as, a, as a technology to, to the local markets and then eventually to overseas markets. Amazing. Very exciting. Now, uh, Paul, it would be great if you could tell us about some highlights of your venture. Um, so any key milestones that you've hit so far that would allude to future success of the business? Yes, I think if you look back over our last couple of years, it's, it's fundamental to understand that we've gone through some significant milestones. The first one was raising mm -hmm. some seed capital. We went through two seed rounds where we raised capital that particularly allowed us to research and develop the uh, re research and, and development review of the global mm -hmm. marketplace and the Australian New Zealand marketplace. And that helped mm -hmm. us determine the opportunity uh, that is available for us to, to go and prosecute. 
We've stood up technology here in Australia in a secure instance in a SaaS environment. Our technology sits both in the cloud, but can also sit behind the firewall, as we call it. So it can sit on premise inside our customers' um, own data centers. And we are now in an extensive uh, approach of go to market where we are looking at all industry sectors, typically mid market to top end of town across all industries. And we are in very tight discussions around uh, getting momentum of building the deployment of clients in this marketplace. So we're at a very interesting journey point of the future of our success. And we believe where we are now and with the recent industry events and with changes in legislations that we're likely to see in the coming months, this will exponentially accelerate our success and our revenue as we go into 23 and beyond. Absolutely, no doubts about that. Uh, now let us talk about the team behind uh, Data Bench. So, what, because you know, as you would already know, it is one of the most important factors when it comes to scaling the business. So, it would be great if you could share with our audience um, a little bit about your team. What are the skills and expertise that they bring to the table? Yes. Well, we're a small team today, and that core team is made up of, of many years of experience in both the technology, in um, finance and, and uh, fundraising, uh, as well as in the go-to-market attributes, selling, marketing, and getting SaaS technology software up and running successfully. Mm -hmm. We are supported by uh, a very capable team uh, of uh, outsource uh, parties, particularly for functions that help us with things like brand collateral for marketing, uh, our legal support, because naturally being compliant with legislation and regulations, it's critical that we're on top of those criteria all the time. We have some great legal support uh, who is um, providing us with the appropriate information that we put into the technology. We also are supported by uh, a technology partner who does the application development and technology support for us. So um, we have a large team that sits behind a very small team from the data bench perspective, and we continue to grow. And as we build our business, we will look to bring more things in-house. So we are you know, going through that evolutionary uh, stage of, of growing a business from startup and, uh, and building as we go. So exciting times for us. And um, we're very positive around how we're going to build this business going forward. Brilliant. Now, as a parting question, Paul, I would love uh, if you could share with us, and this is for the prospective investors in the audience, what does the roadmap look like for Data Bench over the next six to 12 months? So what should investors be excited to see with your venture? Yes. And, um, and welcome to our investors listening to this, because this is a critical aspect of where we are in our, our life cycle to date. So I'll talk about a couple of things. First of all, mm -hmm. uh, local market development and revenue attainment. We, are, we see ourselves on the cusp of potentially quite a large volume of activity. And I say that based on what prospects are speaking to us about. Because the um, regulatory requirements are changing, this is accelerating boardroom uh, conversations around um, the, the need to take a, a serious look at data privacy, both the protection of the privacy assets, the meeting of the regulatory compliance, the meeting and automation aspects of consumer requests, and to better know where their data resides from both a security point of view, a life cycle point of view. And we see this translating into a take up of the data bench solution here in Australia. And we see some very strong revenue prospects in uh, 2023. In parallel to that, we see the acceleration of our patents in, uh, from, uh, I guess, knowledge capital to intellectual property. Uh, we have about 12 to 18 months of development life cycle ahead of us across those six patents to be able to bring those patents to, to market and then, and then achieve additional license fees from the sale of that intellectual property once it's developed. We also have interest from other parties overseas who are keen to look at this intellectual property and license it in other markets for us outside Australia and New Zealand. So we see that as a, as a future additional extension to the business, but also as a revenue stream uh, from outside of Australia and New Zealand uh, in, in the future years. We also top and tail our business technologies with advisory services. 
so uh, implementation services, but also advisory services on best practices around compliancy and, uh, and assessments. We can run assessments for businesses so they can assess uh, through our support or even through their own upskilling, uh, their, own, their own compliance to regulatory requirements at any point in time. Brilliant. Well, congratulations firstly on everything that has been achieved so far. And uh, we are looking forward to keeping tabs on the growth of DataBench moving forward. For anyone who's interested to get in touch with the team at DataBench, please see the details at the side of the screen and in the description and a representative will reach out to you. Well, thanks again, Paul, for joining me for this interview and I wish you all the luck with your venture. Right. Thanks, Rhythm. And, and thank you to all the investors out there. Um, uh, appreciate having the opportunity to speak with you today. Sounds good. Thank you.